Thanks for your time. Today we are going to discuss about the uh, Cosmos TV data migration plan and uh, the use case uh, as per the agenda the introduction of the use case then uh, how we have migrated customer uh, Cosmos TV data migration from one uh, tenant to the tenant there will be a short demo and then we will discuss about the certain challenges we faced and how we overcome that. So uh, decision process automation, this is uh, for a customer um, and there are uh, some web APIs and the web apps are the data sources. So the uh, web APIs data uh, genders in JSON file, those data are ingested uh, by using function app to the Cosmos TV. And also there are function apps which consume data from web APIs and send the data to the streaming data set to Power BI, which the business just uh, use the live dashboard to monitor the data and these functions run every 15 minutes there are some websites also available uh, internal and external websites so website scrapping uh, is the one where which we extract the data from these websites and uh, store those data to the cosmos tv and also be send the data to the streaming data set uh, to, so the businesses can see the live dashboard the values so uh, and there are certain business rules uh, which executed every 15 minutes uh, which uh, decides uh, the, what the action should be taken. So uh, there will be email notification uh, sent based on business rules and uh, the data will be sent to the streaming data set. There is another set of uh, reports and dashboards available which are analytical dashboards which are used by the business users to do some kind of uh, historical data analysis and the source is Cosmos TV. The database used uh, for as machine learning uh, which is for regression algorithm used to, to do forecast of the data. So uh, this is a customer data and uh, they wanted to move this entire uh, new tenant. So uh, existing tenant to new tenant, all the applications migrated. As part of this scope of this uh, session, we will discuss about the Cosmos TV part, uh, what are the changes uh, we did, uh, what are the issues we faced. So uh, data migration plan, uh, there are certain steps uh, covered, uh, our prerequisites, uh, prerequisite means we need to define the scope, or the approach and migration tools, we need to find uh, what are the tools appropriate for doing this kind of activity, the timeline. There are certain factors uh, to be considered, uh, like decisions like online, offline data migration, understanding the impact of data migration on business continuity how much downtime is acceptable by the business. So those things will uh, align us to the uh, business expectation from this activity. The next step is pre-data migration plan, which will uh, have auditing, governance, data mapping, understanding the data, what are the collections to be considered for migration, how much data to be migrated, what is the partition key for each, um, each container, and uh, whether ID should be auto-generated or we are using ID field uh, as some kind of a business utilized uh, values. So those things have been to analyze so that we can plan well. And the data migration plan where we need to create those collections, uh, those define those partition keys, and uh, then we'll use the tool to extract the data from the source Cosmos TV to target Cosmos TV, and then logging. Uh, so in this case, we can define whether we are going uh, at a sort all the data moving from the source to target and then enable the system there or uh, in, in, or we can do uh, increment data load as well. So in, in our case, we have followed both. So first we migrated all the data to a certain date from the source Cosmos TV to target Cosmos TV. Then we enabled all the supporting uh, services like function apps, uh, reporting and the, so that they can use the new uh, a new uh, Cosmos TV and then uh, during the gap of uh, cut off time and the uh, service other services loaded so that data or chunk of data will be extracted uh, from the source and inserted to the target so uh, in our case both the both the uh, tenants both the services all the function apps were running in parallel so uh, so that there will not be any difference of data in both the systems so uh, once the data is loaded, uh, we need to test all these uh, individual uh, containers, uh, whether the data is loaded successfully or not. Then uh, once all the containers data loaded, then we need to do the pre-production uh, pre validation, pre-production which will say that whether new Cosmos TV is ready to be production release or not. Once this is verified, then we'll go production release. 
now now the now in business users will be using this new cosmos db and um, then the next step is the retirement plan we need to decide uh, based with the, after discussion with the business users what is the retirement plan we should follow so in our case we are using three months retirement plan so for three months these two uh, cosmos tv uh, two tenants will have all the services uh, running for three months after three months the the original the old uh, tenant uh, services will be removed there are certain references here uh, microsoft document on on the usage of data migration tool uh, the github report uh, repository where we can have we need to download the migration tool and which will help us to do data migration from one cosmos tv to other cosmos tv um, then a few more details uh, on this documentation few more details about the tools so um, in case we find some kind of issue we can uh, we can download uh, the data from the source cosmos tv uh, and target as a json file and then do json file we can uh, again uh, use as a source to the target cosmos tv that also can be done is one of the approaches to be done so in our case we did uh, the use the tool which will uh, load everything from the source uh, cosmos tv to target cosmos tv we'll go for a short demo so we have connected to the target cosmos tv and uh, this is the database id sample data is the database and let's create the container first before using the uh, tool to migrate data from uh, source cosmos tv to target we we'll first create the container here so so uh, the container uh, we have created now let's choose the partition key and uh, since the source container uh, is having the partition key as date key we are using the same here and then click on ok now the battery data container is created now this contains uh, now there is no data here but, but once the data is loaded, once we click on the refresh, uh, we can see the data there. I have downloaded the migration tool from the GitHub and I just opened it. There are two uh, EXEs available. One is dt.exe, which is for console application uh, command. Through command, we can uh, execute them. Another one is dtui.exe, which is a user interface. So here in this case, we are using dtui. So uh, it has a user interface. We can explain uh, the details. Uh, the different sources can be used uh, json file mongodb uh, sql csv and uh, other it's based dynamo db and in, in our case we are going to use azure cosmos tv which is a source also cosmos tv and target is also cosmos tv we are going to use that so as per the connection string we will provide and uh, connection string consists of three part one is endpoint account key and the database so uh, let's take the connection string and click on the verify and uh, then go we need to provide the collection so in our case uh, it is uh, battery data is the source and this is a collection and we need to decide whether we need to take all the data or the, some part of data if it don't provide any kind of query uh, it will take all the data from the source and target so in this demo let's take a few set of data so uh, for example we are using top 100 star so it will just um, choose 100 uh, records from the source and then move to the target now let's click on this next and in the here we have already put the uh, connection string of the target and uh, target is sample data and collection of the collection we need to create first so uh, it is again the same and partition key been to define so uh, as we already defined what is the partition key there is a dead key and id field is the id and here there are a few uh, things we need to re uh, remember uh, one is a disable automatic id generation if you want other uh, ids uh, for this document uh, should be any kind of business relevant data not any automated GUID then we need to do, we need to check, uh, do a check mark here so that it will not create 
the automatic uh, GUID uh, graph uh, based uh, IDs value and if there is any, any data already available in target uh, then we need to create this we need to check mark this and all the other details uh, we can refer the Microsoft document about the connection mode injection policy indexing policies uh, that will be in detail in the document and then click on create uh, we need to provide a, a, a error log file here here we can verify the the details of uh, the source and target and uh, we need to confirm what are the details here then once this is verified then we can click on the import now the data is moved uh, from the source uh, cosmos db to the target cosmos db uh, refresh this collection we can see the data now that means data is loaded by the tool successfully and the data is available at target cosmos db uh, now we have seen the data is moved from the source cosmos db to target cosmos db and during this operation we face some challenges uh, those are uh, listed here so we need to ensure the collection and data are case sensitive so uh, the, the, when you write the queries or uh, mention the container name in the tool uh, we need to uh, we need to ensure those are case sensitive and those are correct otherwise it will not work and uh, partition key and id column we need to be very careful about that when you choose uh, appropriate partition key and id column so uh, in, in our case uh, the one mistake we did uh, we did not check mark disable automatic id generation so for one of the uh, one, for one of the uh, container the id was uh, not auto generated field it was some kind of business value uh, used value was mentioned calculated value was mentioned so uh, by we did not check this uh, disable ID, automatic id generation for that container and we uh, once the data is migrated we found there are some kind of uh, uh, data available uh, with uh, with id is auto generated one which is not going to be used by the application so we need to delete them so uh, we, we wrote a console application to delete all those IDs which are auto generated and not going to be useful for our system so we deleted them and then again uh, we followed the same process but uh, this time we checked did a check mark here disable automatic ID generation so in that case whatever the ID is the value is there in source the same ID is going to be used as the target as well so uh, that check, check mark of disable automatic ID generation will help us to do that it will not create them it will just copy that old uh, the original id to the target id update existing document so in case there is any any kind of data already available for the same partition key it will go and update that so these two are uh, very important to remember so as part of this uh, deletion document uh, by uh, based on id so this is a code snippet here uh, the console application we created which used a NuGet package uh, Microsoft Azure document db core and we need to provide the endpoint uh, of the Cosmos TV the master key we need to provide and then uh, we need to be collected all these IDs which uh, which need to be deleted and uh, that we have provided here and we just need to loop into uh, each IDs and uh, it has to be deleted one by one so uh, here we provide the um, the container name the database name and the id and those ids uh, will be deleted so here in the partition key we see undefined dot value so the partition key is mandatory so uh, in our case we do not want to delete a partition we just want to delete the uh, uh, id value for the document so uh, we have specified undefined and this is how we have deleted all the IDs uh, which are auto generated ones for the business uses. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time and uh, please uh, provide your feedback. Uh, thanks.